myself, 2200 at 1012, uh, white male, 1015, 51 towards the Bordsman area. I thought we were going to stop with some cigarettes. I'll make sure they stop and get some. Yeah, I will make Oh, uh, man, no, you can't no, give me no listen, cigarettes. No, we are, we are. <laughs> we are. For several hours, we had gone back and forth with Josh not knowing anything about where Heather was or if anything had happened to Heather. But when he finally broke and told us that he could take us where the body was, this was a big break in the case. You going towards your mom's house? No? Where are we going towards her? Y'all got in there? Go to her house. Is that her house? Uh, we're going up towards Amelia's house. Can y'all, man, I do this shit. Okay. I have a mark you to meet us at the following address 65 5500. Northwest 219th Street, right? It was roughly 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning um, when we actually made it here to this site. And Josh brought us down this trail. It, it was almost like he was trying to find different spots. As you can see, there's a trash pile here. He was just saying, well, this is what Amelia told me. Amelia told me that she was here on the property. She was with inside of a, or in the monks of a trash pile. So I think we kind of looked at this for a second and we, come, we came up here to the, to the rear of the trailer. We eased around the side of the trailer and he took me down the back, this back little pathway And it was here in this area here, where you can see where the ground has a small little indention. I remember grabbing a, a, a twig like, like this, breaking it off. And I, I kind of like grabbed it and, and poked around underneath that area. And the ground was real soft and it kind of went, went all the way down to my knuckle. Just gave you an eerie feeling that, you I mean, you were just, there was a body laying there underneath the ground. Knowing now that Heather might be buried in her backyard raised our suspicions about Amelia once again. So as we went back to the office to talk to Josh again, we also knocked on the door and woke up Amelia and asked her to come back to the office as well. The cops said that there was a body in our yard. And as soon as the cops said that, Amelia started crying. I knew then and there that Amelia was in trouble because a body was found in her yard, so it makes it look like she had something to do with it. We knew that she had more knowledge than what she was telling us. And I think at that point, that's when Amelia started directing us in a different direction. It hit me when you said something in the other room about my mom's back trail. Because you said something about in that trail. And um, tonight after the 15th, he was at my window at 5 a.m. He normally calls. And he was up. What time was It was like 5, 5, 30, because he normally goes to work. In the morning? Yeah. So you're saying it to be the 16th? Yeah, the morning of the 16th. She then began to say things that would lead us to believe Josh was the one responsible. Why didn't you tell me all this in the beginning? Because I didn't put two and two. I thought he was full of crap. And then when you said something about my mom's back trailer, is when it clicked in my head. People who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. So why would she not have told us that from the beginning? Now, she is dating Josh. She is pregnant with his child. So I guess I could understand why she would not want to fill us in on Josh's responsibility. If you need me to testify, be a witness, or anything, I'm more than willing to help. I'm not going to let some sick man cross me that
So everything she's telling me is a lie. If she's telling you I took that girl and tried her mouth, that's a lie. What about putting her in the hole? What about killing her? No. What about knocking on the front window that morning? No. I did not. So everything she's that. telling me is a lie. Yes, sir. I didn't take that girl and tried her. I'm going to put her in the hole. I remember the sun coming up the next morning. Really wasn't much conversation at all. It was just getting back to the house, getting the job done to have confirmation that she was there. I remember being with the evidence techs and we slowly documenting uh, debris, uh, the mattress, the remnants of a TV, the chair. We photographed the pile from all angles and try to capture images of everything that was placed on top. And we have uh, little metal poles with the orange flag on it. And then you make what you believe is the outline of the area that has been disturbed before. When I started digging the surface back, um, I hit a piece of plyboard. Uh, at that point, we knew there was something there, uh, an, an object. Um, I kind of put the tip of the shovel underneath the plyboard and kind of pried it up a little bit. And when I'm digging, you can smell uh, the odor of death. And that's when we knew, or we were pretty sure that we found Heather Strong. And at that time, I was able to physically see uh, Heather's face. The rest of her body appeared to be submerged in a black duffel bag, but I couldn't see her face. We just, we just stood there for a moment, and it was just like, just silent. Part of you wants to say it's not her, she's not there, she's somewhere else. You're hoping and wishing that she's alive somewhere else. Um, and at the same time, the other part of you uh, knows that she's deceased, she's dead. Um, so you kind of try to hold back your feelings, but it's hard. We're human. Somebody had buried her underneath trash. They folded her and put her in a suitcase and they put her in a hole and there was nobody to feel bad, nobody to miss her and to come grieve for her and uh, show that, that she was a person, that she was a mother um, and that she was gonna be missed. When um, Bowie called me um, and told me that they had found Heather, we were actually out in the yard getting in the car and Jacob and Tyler were both here. And um, he told me that they found her. She said, oh no, not my baby girl. And I remember her falling to the porch. She was screaming. She held the phone down on the ground and um, I just remember realizing what was going on and realizing that she was talking about Heather. And I guess my blood pressure got to the point to where it, got, it was so high that my nose started pouring out blood. And my brother, he, he fell to the ground. He was on his hands and knees crying. Tyler and Jacob didn't handle it very well either. We just kind of all fell apart. It was bad. You know, and I'm standing out there watching everything, and they're carrying what they said was her body. And I was just like, Mom, it can't be her. It can't be her. And so um, I, it wasn't confirmed until a few days later that it was her. But um, you don't believe it. Like, part of you just does not want to accept that, 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 that that's really somebody you care about, you know?
We knew, number one, Josh took us to the body. Josh knew where the body was. And number two, it's on Amelia's property. Known, or should have known, that there's a body buried on your property. That's a lot to explain.